<laughs> okay, it's morning of the pitch. Um, it's, we pitch at, I think, 8.45, yeah? I've already thrown up this morning. I couldn't eat breakfast because I thought I was gonna throw up. Then I didn't eat breakfast and I still threw up, so. So far, so good. All right, we're here. It's judges, everybody else. the trade show and there we are <laughs> the pairs matching app and we are in the business of connecting people that is all that we're about and if you want to know a little more I'll dive into it making friends with couples can be hard this is something that my wife and I learned a year and a half ago when we first got married and tell me if you sound familiar so when we first got married all of our single friends stopped inviting us to movie nights and they stopped inviting us to parties with single people because they just feel like it's weird. So we lost some friends there. When we moved out of our university into our new basement apartment, we moved into an area that had some younger couples. There were a few, but they were all in a different stage of life than us. And couples are picky. Like couples who have young kids want to hang out with couples with young kids. Couples who's having their like if they're pregnant, they want to hang out with couples who are pregnant. And couples without kids want to hang out with couples without kids. Couples whose kids have left the house. It's just it's very, very picky. And on top of that, they're picky because you're trying to get four people with different personalities and different interests to have a really great relationship. When you're single, you could have your video game friends, your sport friends, you could have your study group in college. But once you're in a relationship, you're all of a sudden trying to make a bunch of different personalities work together. And that just makes it hard by nature. Not to mention things like if you move to a new area, you're starting from ground zero. If you work remotely like I do, but then your colleagues aren't really available to hang out on the weekends. Um, if you have a hard time introducing yourself, maybe you're more in zero. If you have niche interests, like, you don't think that's super niche, but let's say you like Dungeons and Dragons, or whatever it might be. It's hard to find groups of people in a large place like that. Um, and we found that as you grow up, as you have kids, and as you're in a relationship, you just have less time to socialize. Two working people trying to find time to go out and meet new people all the time to make good friends is, uh, it's tricky, it's tricky. And that's the problem that my wife and I were trying to solve. We've felt this for the last year and a half. We've just sat there and thought, why is this so hard? There are so many social media apps out there. The internet has come incredibly far away in the last 20, 30 years. Why is there not a solution built for couples, which is the fundamental unit of our society? So the question is, what are we doing about it? We are the only solution right now, and it is Paris. And I'll explain it. It's super, super easy. We're not reinventing the wheel here. You make a profile with your partner. You do all the normal profile stuff, like you put your name, you put your ages in, you put your location in, your relationship status, all of your interests that you have as a couple. Then you just browse on the app a bunch of other couples who are in your area and you can filter by, oh, I only want to see people who like golf. I only want to see people who like pickleball or who like skiing or whatever else like Then you kind of do the, the virtual filtering that we've all become accustomed to, which is, I can see some pictures, do I think that they're gonna be a good match for me and for my partner? You express interest in some, and if they express interest in you as well, you have a pair, and then you make the plans, you hang out, and the last function of the app is going to be giving couples things to do, whether it's events, giving them a chance to host events, or um, just giving local businesses a chance to. They give me my time things, so give me a second, breeze to the last events. Um, the question is, are, is there enough people to feed this? Is this gonna be a big enough app? Consumer apps are hard because you have to have a large user base, there's the network effect. If you look at the trend of dating apps, we're at 300 million, I think, a year or two ago, and this is only getting bigger. Online is becoming bigger and bigger when it comes to making friends. Younger generations are not just preferring it, they expect an online solution when it comes to meeting people, because they like that, that internet buffer before they, they meet someone. We think, you know, at a nice conservative estimate in the next five or 10 years, um, 75 million people globally, which if you do the math, you know, can this make some money? We think so. Um, social media apps and consumer apps in general range from about 10 to 25 dollars of revenue per user. So let's say we went on the conservative side and we did 50 million global users, um, revenue range is 500 million to a little north of a billion dollars. It's software, it scales really easily, and um, consumer apps are really easy to monetize. 
where we're at now, we founded in 2022. We launched our first app that's on the App Store right now in 2023, and we're learning a lot from that. This year, this summer, is when we're launching our second version of the app, and that's where we're here at Railroad. We actually want to hire a UI and UX designer. I am neither of those things, and consumer apps have to be perfect in order to do really, really well. So that's our next step, is to hire the UI designer, launch the second version of the app, and then go get our user base. Um, with my last couple seconds, I know I'm out of time now, I just want to bring home the main point, which is we are, we're in the business of connecting people. Since COVID, it's just gotten worse. Like people becoming more isolated with remote work, they're becoming more isolated from peers and people around them. And that's a big problem. And this problem is only getting worse, it's not getting better. It's becoming a bigger, bigger problem. The more couples that my wife and I talk to, the more we realize this is not something unique to us. Everybody in our stage of life and other stages of life are experiencing all of the problems we described. Um, if you would like, I'll put it for the next five minutes, you can try our demo. But with that, we'll take your time and we'll open up your questions. All right, I'm doing a little recording after um, just to include after the pitch video, I put together some clips from today and, uh, my wife's camera or her phone actually ran out of storage as she was recording, uh, my pitch and the feedback from the judges. So I thought I'd just record a quick clip to talk about the rest of the event from the feedback from the judges through, through the rest of it. So, um, after the pitch, they gave, um, maybe two, five minutes of feedback and questions and. There were only a couple things that I thought were interesting. One, um, one of the guys, I think there were four judges, and one of the guys didn't like the branding. He didn't like pears. He didn't think, I thought it was going to be a food company. So he was like, maybe you should rethink about your branding and like your logo. And he tried to get me to like, he said, talk through, like, talk through your thought there and your logo. And I was like, dude, we wanted to start a company and we just picked a name. Like, we thought it was funny. The rest of the day, people told us how fun and how like, oh, that's a good logo. Oh yeah. The pair, it's like a cute play on words. I'm like, okay, great. So we've got enough feedback from people that I think we're on the right track. So I ignored that piece of, of feedback. Um, we did get good feedback on the pitch deck when we talked about community building and they said we should run with that. Um, so, you know, as much as we could incorporate building communities and, uh, that, you know, that, that image in our brand, in our messaging, they said, run with that as much as possible. Um, they asked the obvious question of what traction we have. And they all seem to have a mild interest in that point. But once we said we didn't have much traction, then people stopped paying attention. Um, one of the ladies who was one of our judges, she didn't seem to like me at all. And actually, of the four judges that were there, or maybe those five, I think those five judges, or maybe four, I forget actually. Either way, only one person really seemed to like me and like the idea. I could tell, like, I could tell right away when I started pitching, I was like, she's not paying attention. She's zoned out. She doesn't like me for whatever reason. I couldn't even, I, I couldn't figure out why I stood up there and I said, we're ready to go. And I looked at her and kind of like made eye contact with all of the judges. And I could tell she was just, she was not having it with me for, for whatever reason. So didn't like my face, I guess. Um, and the other guy just also seemed he seemed like he was paying attention, but he didn't seem interested. And I could just tell. So there was one guy there who did, who funny enough was experiencing the same thing that my wife and I experienced and that we built the app for. He said, Oh yeah, like I moved to Utah and I just don't feel like I have a good community. And he was talking about that and said, this is like a really, really great app. And I think you should do this and this and this. So I had one person's attention the entire time and who was like kind of bought in and really felt it. And then the other, the rest of the judges just weren't about it. So, um, if you can tell, we didn't win anything throughout the entire event. And it went exactly as I thought, honestly. We pitched really early. And then we had the trade show. And the trade show was pretty normal. You know, people kind of trickle in and out. And you explain the idea of the app. And it was pretty good. If if people were under the age of, um, let's say, 35, then they said, oh, that's a really good idea for an app. Like, 100%, I would totally use that. And a lot of them really wished that we had something that they could download. Because they're like, how many users do you have? Like, can I download this right now? So our lack of, of traction and preparation right now and a lack of an app kind of bit us there. Um, people over the age of 35, you know, like 40 plus, it was about 50%. So some of them said, oh yeah, that's cool. And they were clearly just being nice. And then the other 50% were people who were like empty nesters, people who had kids and the kids are out of the house. And they would say, yeah, like all my kids are out of the house. And my husband and I, we just want other people who 
are our age who like to go hiking because some people our age just don't go outside as much anymore and they seem like they, they really bought into the idea um so that was really, really good we got really, really good feedback from people the demo did not go as well as i thought so we had our poster we had a qr code and nobody really used the demo i probably had three four five people throughout the entire day who scanned the qr code and used the demo um which i thought was going to be a shoe and i thought we were to get people on the demo and they say oh that's how it works that's really cool but it did not go as well as i thought which i don't think was um, our fault in any way i just don't think i understood what trade shows were like so when you go to a trade show nope like most people who go at least when it's open to the public they're not investing they're just there to like look around and you know they just want you to like pitch them five seconds of a thing and on the off chance they really love the idea or you can explain it simply enough that they get it in five seconds then you might get a longer conversation which we did with some of the younger couples but the majority part people just wanted to come by see what you had um we had our drink station so i'd be like hey let me get you a little drink and then they'd stand there and once they finished their drink they're like oh that's cool great thanks and they would walk out so i think my expectation for a trade show is probably off from what a trade show actually is um and then after you know a couple of hours they announced the of the 36 people that got in that were semi-finalists there were six finalists and all of them were companies that had revenue and had traction and were growing pretty pretty good in my brain i was pretty upset with this because they weren't startups like they weren't true true startups these were companies who had been around for a couple of years they were making revenue like they were making money and a couple of them at the end of their pitch were like oh hey we're looking for like 1.5 million dollars in a series or like a seed fund round or we're looking for like $1 million for 10% equity. Those companies won, I think, $15,000 and $5,000. And I thought that was a waste of money because of all the companies that were there, those companies don't need $15,000. It was an absolute waste. A 15,000 would have been a big deal for us and I would have, have loved to use that um, to push our company forward. But the judges were looking for traction. They wanted to see that you had an idea that was you know proven and that was growing. And they wanted to throw and they wanted to sprinkle fifteen thousand dollars onto your idea and feel really good about themselves so um and that i did expect i think when i got the letter that said hey you're in the competition one of my first thoughts was we're gonna go and it's gonna be fun but just like i noticed six months ago in the last competition that they had the companies that win are the companies that have traction that have revenue uh, no matter what the business idea is or what the product is so overall it was really, really fun um i finally feel less stressed after an entire week of not sleeping and of thinking about the pitch and thinking about everything so um i feel better and i'm just gonna crash tonight so that's my update from from today's event we're back to our normal three-step plan <laughs> we're gonna go recode the app this summer we're gonna launch it then we're gonna do our i forgot the other steps for to be honest we're gonna do our small ad campaigns and there was something else but whatever it was i clearly don't remember so uh, we're back to the big master plan now, and it's just time to grind. As always, I hope something in this video was useful, <laughs> and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one.